How's it going guys, Vabov here and welcome to a video talking about the Royal FlexPi 2. Now if you haven't heard of this phone, I can understand why, but the Royal FlexPi was one of the first ever foldable smartphones out there in the market. It actually beat the Galaxy Fold from Samsung as well as the Huawei Mate X from Huawei and it became the first foldable smartphone in the market and that was pretty much it because everything else that it brought wasn't the best quality. So the hardware on board was somewhat lacking, the software was lacking, the hardware experience when it came to processing power was there, but in terms of using it as a typical smartphone, it wasn't there. And I haven't used the phone, but this is just coming off of all the reviews and all of the news I've read about this phone online. And this is the official page of the FlexPi. And as you can see, it's basically a saying that the FlexPi is a smartphone and a tablet all in one with a second generation wing display, a water OS, and a dual view camera mode, as well as the Qualcomm Snapdragon 855 processor. So it's basically last generation processing software and hardware, and this is what the phone looks like. So this is in its folded state, and if you were to go over this animation, it actually unfolds for you. So if we click here, you can see it unfold right about there. And to be honest, it looked like your typical average first generation foldable smartphone. Now there was nothing wrong with it, but they did it so that they could be the first in the market. They didn't have any sort of finesse when it came to a hardware on board and most of the complaints about this phone were to do with how the software didn't perform, how the hardware was flimsy and clumsy and just it didn't scream the essence of a premium foldable smartphone and now we've got the likes of the Galaxy Z Fold 2 for example, the Z Flip, the Huawei Mate XS all screaming premium hardware and compared to that this phone wasn't quite there at all. Now ever since then uh, Royal has gone back into the drawing board uh, by introducing a new form of display and this display basically eliminates all the problems that the FlexPi 1 had. So this event happened sometime in late March of this year and ever since then we haven't really heard of the phone with rumors pointing to a release of the phone sometime during this time and we'll get to the launch of the FlexPi 2 in just a moment. I do want to talk about the improvements that the display is bringing to the table. So one of the things with hardware on the FlexPi was that it didn't fold out completely. Well, this one, it folds out completely. So that's already a big step forward. But if you actually look at the display uh, very minutely, there is no layer peeling. And this is a problem in foldable smartphones. Even with this generation of hardware, there is some sort of layer peeling involved when you fold these displays. And this apparently gets rid of that. So that's the third generation display that Royal is talking about. And this is how they're marketing it to be. So this could be a way to make foldable displays even more durable. And that being said, they've done a ton of tests to ensure that this thing is very durable during daily usage. So all of that has been promised in the March event. Not only that, it also promises some great contrast and colors on the display. So if you look at this comparison, it looks at the conventional display as as well as the third generation uh, Cicada or Kikada, don't know how to pronounce it, Cicada wing display. And apparently the third gen is gonna have a 500 times better contrast level compared to a typical high-end LCD panel. So all of that is absolutely incredible, but what are we looking at in terms of specifications and when can we expect the FlexPi 2? Well, it looks like the FlexPi 2 is coming very shortly. September 21st is the date when it's going to be unveiled. And this is the official invite. So if you're interested in watching, I'm sure you can tune in to Royal's uh, YouTube channel to watch this event live. That's what I'll be doing. But before uh, talking about the event, I do want to say most of the things that the event is going to showcase are already out there and that's exactly what I'm going to discuss in this video, beginning with the hardware on board. So this is a Geekbench 4 score from the Royal FlexPi 2, which points to a Qualcomm Snapdragon 865 processor on board with up to 8GB of RAM and 128GB of storage. Uh, that's at least what I think. Now the 865 is by no means an old processor. It's maybe four to six months old, but in terms of processing power, it's a very minute upgrade to the 865 plus. So in terms of you using the smartphone, it's not gonna make a major difference. I think most of the thing or most of the optimization now comes with software and that's where Royal really needs to work. But there is more about the FlexPi 2 and that's basically coming from this Tena certification that was leaked a couple of hours ago and that's what I wanna address. So the first thing we have is the weight as well as the colors of the smartphone. So we're gonna get a magic gold, a dark night black as well as a star gray color finish. So 
In terms of how flashy this thing is going to be, the gold one is going to be the flashiest and the black and gray are sort of going to be more minute and uh, sort of minimal colors. Now in terms of weight, it's a 340 gram device. That's a pretty chunky device if you ask me. Any typical smartphone you pick up is going to be about 180 to 200 grams. So this is almost double. And in comparison, the Galaxy Z Fold 2 is about 280 grams. So it's still heavier than that. So that's something that's going to take a bit of time to get used to. Plus, we don't know how thick this is going to be. There are some pictures here. So you can see uh, the thickness and the profile of the overall uh, design. And the design borrows a lot from the first gen design. So it's not going to be completely revolutionary but it is going to be combining both aspects of the Galaxy Z Fold as well as the Huawei Mate X so you get this display but you also get this foldable display but it's sort of the foldable manner of a book. I think it borrows more from the Mate XS rather than the Galaxy Fold series, but that's just uh, my overall opinion. There's another picture uh, looking at the rear of the smartphone, and this seems to be this flashy blue color. I don't know which this might be. This might be the dark night black because uh, there is a bluish hue to nights in you know the world, so that might be what they're going for. But enough of that, uh, 16 million color depth, that's pretty standard. In terms of what this screen is going to offer, it's going to be a 1920 by 1440 display at 7.8 inches AMOLED panel when completely open. So this is the size of the phone. It's going to be similar to the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 2 once again. We don't know the aspect ratio of this screen, but it looks to be a pretty standard standard uh, typical aspect ratio is not supposed to be anything extravagant from what I know. Now the only problem with this design is that I don't know how it's going to work when it's folded. Uh, is it going to be usable when it is folded? Because one of the complaints that the FlexPi 1 had was that when it was folded it was a really chunky phone sort of like the Microsoft Surface Duo and maybe that's the look that the Royal FlexPi 2 is actually going for. Now it's going to have a 4450 milliamp hour battery on board which again I think is pretty standard so comparing to the Z Fold 2 again it's a 4500 so not that big of a difference um, you're likely to see 5G connectivity on this phone as well given the 865 processor but aside from that there's nothing on how this thing is going to incorporate uh, charging technology so what sort of charging speeds you're going to get on this phone of course all of that needs to be unveiled in the actual event but the bulk of the specifications are here so another thing i want to look at is of course the camera specification and it actually shows you what sort of camera and what sort of specification we are looking at so it's going to be a 64 megapixel primary sensor alongside a 16 an 8 and a 32 megapixel sensor. So if we go back to the picture that we saw here, it's a quad camera setup from the looks of it with a flash on board too. The 64 megapixel sensor might be some sort of Sony IMX sensor. Uh, the other ones, my best guess would be one would be an ultra wide, one might be a telephoto, and the last one might be a dedicated portrait lens, something like the Vivo X50 Pro does. Again, uh, these are not confirmed things. These are just rumors. So I'm just pointing out what is there uh, in terms of the competition and what they could incorporate. I think a big step here would be to incorporate some sort of gimbal optical image stabilization, which we saw on the LG Wing that I talked about a couple of days ago. That would be a huge step up. But if they could focus on the camera technology per se, which isn't the highest end when it comes to the Galaxy Z Fold 2, we're looking at a triple camera setup, uh, 12 megapixels on the Galaxy Z Fold 2. This looks to be more robust on paper. And maybe if they could incorporate things like telephoto zoom, maybe up to 5x, uh, this could be a good enough offering for the camera. Now, we also don't know if the hinge is going to stay up that's something that's interesting because of course the galaxy z fold 2 has this flex mode we don't know about the flex pi 2 and whether or not it'll bring some sort of laptop mode or not uh now something i just read while i was talking about this there seems to be some sort of optical zoom here at three times so it might not be five times but there's definitely three times zoom so that's something to keep in mind although um, the other thing I wanted to point out was the RAM capacity. So I said 8 gigabytes with 128 gigabytes of storage. It looks like it's going to be 8 gigabytes of RAM with 256 gigabytes of storage and an option to go up to 512 gigabytes with 12 gigabytes of RAM as well. And of course, Android 10 on board. I feel like it's going to be a massive upgrade over the FlexPi 1. And now that Royale has seen how Huawei and Samsung have done, how they've sort of improved on what wasn't the best 
best for consumers, I think they can incorporate all of this and really deliver a product that might be one of the foldable smartphones to get. Because as far as foldables go right now in 2020, I think the Galaxy Z Fold 2 takes the cake for being the foldable smartphone to get. The only reason why you shouldn't get the Galaxy Fold 2 or the Galaxy Z Fold 2 is maybe because of price. I think price sort of makes it beyond reach of a typical budget. And let's say if the 865, an older gen, older gen processor, maybe puts this phone in the $1,300 category or the $1,200 category, you're looking at a pretty robust offering for what you're getting in terms of specifications. But again, all of this is speculation and I'm just going to wait for the official release to give you guys more information. I do actually want to try these foldable smartphones, but they do not come to the UAE market. So it's not really easy to get my hands on it. Here are some bigger pictures. So you guys can really understand what we're looking at. Something that looks a bit weird is the back of the phone. It doesn't look really premium. It's got this sort of meshing or creasing, I'd say. Uh, it did look premium before, but now that we've seen offerings from, you know, Samsung and Huawei, which don't have that, I think Huawei has it, but it's more minimal. I don't think it looks uh, particularly nice. The hinge in itself is also a huge bend, so it's not your typical small bend, it's a much larger bend. And this is what I was talking about with the smartphone setup. So it's gonna be a pretty thick phone or a pretty wide phone uh, to hold. So that's also something to keep in mind when it comes to portability and how you're going to do all of that. But yeah, that's basically the Royal Flex Pi 2 in a nutshell. Again, 21st of September is when we can expect it. And something I just clocked now, once again, these videos just tend to be things that I understand on a regular basis. It just shows a teaser of the phone folding out and it stops at certain edges, which might actually point to a flex mode, something similar to the Galaxy Z Fold 2. Again, I do love making these videos because it just goes to show how wrong you are when it comes to the actual announcement. And sometimes you could be spot on, but that's about it for this one. Let me know what you guys think about the Flex Pi 2. Do you think it's gonna be a successful one? Do you think it's gonna be available outside of China? Because it seems like this is very limited to China. I don't know if we're gonna see a international version, but I hope to do so. And maybe when this phone comes out or when it's announced, we're gonna see more first impressions from the high-end blogs and the people who get these phones early. And that way we can judge how it performs in a much uh, more constructive and a much more educated way. Because at the end of the day, these are all rumors. So that's been it for this one. Thank you guys for watching. This was Vabov. Do subscribe and like for more videos. And I'll see you in the next one. Adios.